Welcome to Touch Technology Review. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to access and change the ringtone on your iPhone. We'll have a look at all the parameters available to you in the control panel. Once we've done that, I'm gonna take you through the process of creating your own musical composition using GarageBand and converting it into a ringtone for even further customization. The best thing about GarageBand is it's actually available for free. This is a very powerful music production tool created by Apple, and you can use it on your iPhone, iPad, iMac, or even MacBook Pro. So make sure you go ahead and download it. But to begin with, we'll get back into the control panel and check out the available parameters on the ringtone settings first. To start with, tap on the settings icon on your iPhone and scroll down to sounds and haptics. When you first open up this control panel, you'll see the top section contains some options that allows you to change the vibration on the ring and whether or not there'll be a vibration when your ringtone is set to silent. The next option down is the ringer volume and below that is a setting to allow you to change the ringer volume itself with the side buttons on your iPhone. If you turn this on, you'll be able to do so. If you leave this turn to off, using the physical buttons on your phone will not adjust the volume of your ringtone. And below this is the list of sounds that you can select from for your ringtone, your text tone, your voicemail, email, calendar alerts, reminder alerts, and even airdrop. You can change each one of these to suit your own style. Now we'll start with the ringtone because that's what this tutorial is primarily about. If you tap on ringtone, there's a whole list of built-in ringtones that you can select from. Tap on any of these to preview. Once you've found the ringtone of your choice, tap on the back button on the left-hand corner, and that will now be your selected ringtone for all incoming calls. Now, before we go ahead and have a look at how to create custom ringtones, I just wanted to quickly point out, you can actually have a custom ringtone for each caller that calls you. If you'd like to do that, tap on the contacts icon, find your contact, tap on edit, scroll down to ringtone, and you can select from the same ringtones that we saw earlier in the settings section. So each caller can have their own unique ringtone. And this is really useful as you can identify who's calling you without even having to look at your screen. So when it comes to customizing the ringtone beyond the ones that are actually available in your iPhone, tap on the ringtone option yet again. And this time in the top section, tap on tones, and this will take you to Apple's ringtone store. You'll see a whole range of ringtones available from sound effects, alternative to blues, children's music, classical, country, dance, electronic, hip hop, and more. As I mentioned earlier in the introduction, for those of you more interested in creating your own original piece of music to use as a ringtone, I'm gonna show you how to do that using GarageBand. To get started, tap on the plus button on the top right of the screen, then the create song icon. This will take you to the track mode, which allows you to select from a different range of instruments with which you can build your musical composition. There is world, guitar, bass, strings, audio recorder for recording vocals, amp for external instrument input, drums and keyboards, and sound library, which allows you to download free instruments, sounds, and loops to add to your compositions. You can also choose to put together your tracks using live loops rather than tracks, which is a more intuitive performance style of creating music, and we'll come back to that very shortly. Before we do, let's quickly take a look at how we can create a track using the keyboard, for example. You can choose from a range of different keyboard sounds, including piano and synth sounds. For this example, I'll tap on the Alchemy Synth, and select one of the preset synthesizer sounds. Once you do that, you can start playing the keyboard to make it more musical. You can turn on the arpeggiator, and now when you tap on a key, you get an arpeggiated chord, which as you can hear, adds a new level of performance to your keyboard input. If you tap on the alternate strip input, it's even easier to play, and you can play along and come up with some really cool progressions using this method. Once you're ready, you can record your melody by tapping the red record icon at the top of the screen.
And once you complete that, you can tap on the track view icon, which is a third one along on the top screen. You could cut the clip, edit, and so on, and you can even layer up your composition with more instruments. To do that, tap on the plus icon on the bottom left of the screen. For example, I could now add some drums by scrolling along to the drum instrument and then selecting either smart drums, acoustic drums, or the beat sequencer. Since I have an electronic sound, I'll use the beat sequencer for this example. I can now tap to add a kick along the grid every fourth beat, for example. This will give me a standard 4-4 kick. Then I can add some hi-hats, toms, and snares. If electronic music isn't your thing, you can go ahead and create a more organic strings or guitar based track. Let's take guitar for example. When you tap on this icon, you'll see a fretboard, which you can literally strum with your finger by swiping along the screen. If you want a vocal track, you can do that too. You can put together any type of music composition in the track mode, and you really are only limited by your imagination and musical ability. Now, if you don't have a high degree of skill musically, then you can have a lot of fun just using the live loops mode. To do that, go back one level and then tap on live loops. There are quite a few song templates available. Let's check out the R&B pack first. When you tap on the R&B icon, you land on the main live loops interface, which is a grid of cells that are filled with individual loops. You can tap on any of these cells to start each loop and begin building your groove by tapping the loops on and off as you play along. If you tap on the upward pointing arrow icons at the bottom, it'll play all of the loops that have been configured in that column. Once you've had a bit of a feel for how this works, tap on the red record button and go ahead and perform. You can even record in some real time effects including the resonance and cutoff filter on the left, which really add a sense of spontaneity and originality into your performance. If you tap on the settings icon on the right hand side, you can change the tempo of the project to make it faster or slower, the time signature and also the key. If you want to see what your performance looks like in track view mode, tap on the track view icon, which is a third one along on the top. You can make further edits here or even add instruments the way I showed you earlier in the video. You can extend or reduce the entire track length by clicking on the plus icon on the top right hand corner. This project is set to eight bars, which is about right as I wanna keep my loop under 30 seconds. If you like, you can make it longer for other projects. When you're ready to save down your project, tap on the first downward pointing arrow icon on the top left of the screen. This will take you back to your project view window. Tap and hold on your project icon and scroll down to the share option. You can choose to save your track down as a song, which you can use in any multimedia project, a ringtone or a project file, which you can share with others or even open up on another device. For this example, we'll save it as a ringtone. So I'll tap on the ringtone icon. Because I adjusted the length of the project over eight bars in a previous step, I now get a message that the ringtone needs to be 30 seconds or less and will automatically be shortened to the appropriate length. GarageBand will export the first 30 seconds of your track. Tap on the top field to change the name of your song. I'll call mine ringtone and then tap on export. It may take a few seconds to complete and you'll then get a pop-up window confirming the successful export of your ringtone. If you want to apply your new ringtone right away, tap on use sound as and then choose to use it as your standard ringtone standard text tone or assign it to a contact. Tap on done once you've made your selection and your ringtone has been applied. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you found this video informative. If you did, feel free to hit me up with a like and consider subscribing to the channel and don't forget to hit the notification bell next to subscribe so that you'll be notified when new videos become available. And if you've got any questions whatsoever on the content you've seen today, feel free to put them in the comments box below. See you on the next one. Bye for now.